Hi everyone, I'm Perrin Anto, and I'm our UX design lead on the Android Accessibility team. I'm joined by my teammate, Casey, and we're keen to share what's new in Android Accessibility, Features, and APIs. Whether you're an end user or a developer, we have plenty of updates for today. First, we'll cover new Android features developed in partnership with disability communities across our various assistive tech. Afterwards, we'll jump into the latest APIs, best practices, and tools to help developers implement accessible experiences on Android. First up, we have updates for hearing aids. In Android 15, you can now pair and control your LE Audio hearing aids with added support for hands-free calling, changing presets, viewing battery levels, and a new quick settings tile. This new tile will also work with ASHA hearing aids, offering an easy way to connect and disconnect your hearing aids. Next up, we've worked further on sound notifications. Sound notifications make household sounds like a baby crying, doorbell ringing, and smoke alarms more accessible by notifying you when they happen, with push notifications, flashes from your camera light, or vibrations on your phone. We've redesigned sound notifications based on user feedback, improving the onboarding process, sound event browsing, and custom sound saving for appliances. It's never been easier to save your microwave versus your tea kettle beeping. Update live transcribe and notifications in the Play Store to try it out. On Android, live caption automatically captions videos, podcasts, audio messages, even stuff you record yourself. Easily access live caption from the volume rocker. This month, you'll see an extra drag handle rolling out in live caption, helping you tailor the number of caption lines shown. For millions of people with atypical speech, being understood can be difficult. To make communication more accessible, Google's speech and research teams join forces to create Project Relate. This Android app aims to help people with atypical speech communicate more easily with others. People can receive a real-time transcription of their speech, repeat what they've said in a computerized voice, and interact with Google Assistant. We've recently redesigned the app, improving the onboarding process. Project Relate enables people to teach the app their unique voice and speech patterns through custom cards, which are recording prompts of any important places, names, or phrases from their personal vocabulary. Later this month, we are launching a way for you to select text and import phrases as custom cards through Android's context menu. This means that you can easily create new custom cards using text from other apps like Chrome. Project Relate is available for download on the Play Store. Go check it out. Switching over to some of our vision accessibility updates. We've heard lots of feedback that the high contrast text was hard to read in certain situations. In Android 15, we've renamed the setting to maximize text contrast and improved it by drawing a solid rectangular background behind text. Across Android, you'll see more consistent high contrast backgrounds for improved readability. Next up, Lookout. Lookout uses computer vision and AI to help blind and low vision users navigate the physical world around them and complete daily tasks more efficiently. Later this month, Lookout is rolling out Find Mode, a new way for you to find and identify objects with your camera. Supported objects include seating and tables, doors and windows, cups, bottles and cans, utensils and tableware, vehicles, bathrooms, and trash bins. There's also the Lookout Image Question and Answer Mode. This is an AI-based feature that integrates a Google DeepMind visual language model to make digital images more accessible. A selfie button allows users to take images of themselves or their background. A capture button lets users easily capture images with framing guidance. Image captions available in English give users detailed descriptions about an image and Q&A, available in the US, UK, and Canada, an interactive feature that allows users to learn more by asking specific questions about the image. Capturing photos and selfies enables people to get an initial description of an image in English right in the app. Lookout is available for download on the Play Store. Go check it out. Lastly, for feature updates, TalkBack, Android Screen Reader. In Android 15, we've made it possible for TalkBack to support Braille displays that are using the HID standard over both USB and secure Bluetooth. This standard, much like the one used by mice and keyboards, will not only help Android support more devices now, but also a wider range of Braille displays over time. We're adding Braille HID to the platform in Android 15, 
working with partners to ensure it's widely supported in our ecosystem and expect to support it in an upcoming Talkback release. These updates would not have been possible without deep collaborations with disability communities and organizations, including Vista Center for the Blind, NTID and RIT, Google's Trusted Testers, and many, many more. I'll pass it over to Casey, who will cover our developer-facing updates, critical work that helps our accessibility features run smoothly on Android. Thanks, Perrin. Those are some really exciting enhancements to Android's suite of assistive technologies. I'm Casey Burkhart, a staff software engineer on the Android Accessibility team. I'm here to share some updates on how developers can best support Android's accessibility features and build highly inclusive experiences for people with disabilities. I'll cover the latest Android APIs, best practices, and tools for accessibility, and how you can put them into practice within your apps and development workflows. Let's start by detailing some new Android platform and Compose APIs to more expressively convey your UI's semantics to assistive technologies. We've heard from users of TalkBack that it can sometimes be challenging to navigate lists, carousels, grids, and other collections, especially when they contain many items or scroll infinitely. TalkBack 15 will offer a container navigation feature, allowing users to more quickly traverse these groups of related content and will also provide feedback describing containers when accessibility focus moves among them. Many logical container views provided by the Android SDK will automatically support container navigation, but you can also indicate your own containers by setting a localized container title on the UI's corresponding accessibility node info. This API is useful if you've created your own custom containers, and it also allows you to provide a supplemental description for any element that acts as one. Users have shared with us that understanding the size of lists, particularly with TalkBack, can be difficult, especially when they include items like row dividers, headings, or other purely decorative content alongside primary list items. To address this, we're adding APIs for developers to convey more information about the logical size of collections to accessibility services. Using these APIs to express a list's true size will allow TalkBack to provide users with more accurate feedback. The new item count and important for accessibility item count fields on accessibility node info's collection info class can be used together to inform services about a collection that has fewer important items than actual items surface to users. When this data is provided by apps, Services like TalkBack will adjust their feedback to more prominently represent important item counts when describing collections and their scroll positions. Providing users with a meaningful traversal ordering when navigating item by item with accessibility services remains an important part of building an intuitive experience within user interfaces. There are some situations where the default left to right and top to bottom ordering is less helpful. To address this, the June Compose Bill of Materials included the capability to customize traversal ordering through two new semantic properties, is traversal group, which identifies semantically important groups, and traversal index, which adjusts the order of individual elements within those groups. You can use is traversal group alone or with traversal index for further customization. Typically, you'll set is traversal group to true on elements which function as a boundary or border in organizing its child elements, which will cause those children to be traversed prior to UI outside of the traversal group. Traversal index will define traversal among those child nodes within the group based on their index, with smaller values appearing first in the traversal ordering. Next up, I'd like to highlight some updates to our accessibility best practices. TalkBack recently launched functionality to provide users with more information about image content, including a Describe Image feature, which uses on-device machine learning models to generate descriptions for image content within apps. This can be particularly helpful for users in understanding images that are not properly labeled. Although it remains a best practice for app developers to provide their own localized accessibility labels, a common scenario where this feature can make a big difference is in describing user-generated content, something that developers may be unable to label themselves. In order to make this feature available for users of TalkBack on a particular UI element, 
app developers should convey image semantics to accessibility services. When using Compose, this is accomplished by using an image composable. If you're working with views, use an image view, an image button, or one of their subclasses. Or if you're using a custom view, override get accessibility class name and return android.widget.imageView. While investigating a wide range of feedback from users of Android's assistive technologies, we've noticed some concerning trends regarding app developers' use of accessibility announcements beyond their intended purpose. Specifically, type announcement accessibility events and views announce for accessibility method. TalkBack's feedback from accessibility announcements is unique in that it supersedes other feedback to ensure the announcement is conveyed. However, this can produce inconsistent, sometimes disruptive, experiences. We've also seen cases where relying on accessibility announcements have resulted in developers overlooking compatibility with accessibility services other than TalkBack, like switch access, voice access, and select to speak. Today, we're updating our guidance to discourage use of type announcement and announce for accessibility. We recommend app developers replace accessibility announcements with more semantic and less disruptive alternatives. These alternatives include providing descriptive labels that clearly communicate actions associated with UI elements, thereby eliminating the need to provide confirmation announcements for most user actions. Using window and pane titles to convey a high-level description for activities and fragments, which are described by TalkBack automatically during transitions and defining live regions on UI elements that appear temporarily or update their description if users should be made aware of related content changes. The Announce for Accessibility API documentation has been updated to include more details and other semantic alternatives. We'll continue to evaluate whether accessibility announcements should remain a supported part of the TalkBack experience and platform API, and we encourage feedback from developers via the accessibility component of Android's public issue tracker if the documented alternatives are not adequate to replace cases where you're using accessibility announcements today. Finally, I'm excited to share some updates about tools that you can use throughout the development process to quickly identify and address potential accessibility barriers. We've heard your feedback. Support for Compose within Android's accessibility tools has been a major focus area. You may have heard of Accessibility Scanner, an app from Google that makes it easy for anyone to quickly put an app's UI through its paces and identify opportunities to improve accessibility. With its most recent update, Scanner will offer actionable recommendations and documentation when scanning Compose UI. We've also built support for Compose into the open source Android accessibility test framework, the foundation for most of the platform's accessibility testing tools. This means that you'll see Compose accessibility recommendations in the Play Store developer console's pre-launch report and in more tools over time. The new UI check mode in Android Studio's Compose Preview is another useful tool in building an accessible and adaptive UI with Jetpack Compose. This mode can be launched while previewing any composable, it evaluates your Compose UI across different configurations and offers suggestions, including these same accessibility recommendations, right within Studio's Problems panel. Our guidance is to address the findings from UI check mode early and often, which can help prevent many common accessibility barriers in your app. We've made some recent updates to composable previews in Android Studio, which can now render your UI as it would appear with features commonly used by people with disabilities like dark theme and a variety of display and font sizes. These previews show your UI's appearance in configurations you may not test regularly, which can help identify issues like low contrast and non-scaling or truncated text. You can define your own composable previews or use our multi-preview templates like Preview Light Dark and Preview Font Scales, which package several recommended configurations for even easier use. Composable previews also work hand-in-hand -hand with UI check mode, allowing you to quickly identify common UI issues across a range of configurations. And those are our top developer-facing updates. We've covered a lot of material here today, so we've included some references in the video description. Be sure to check those out for more details. 
Thank you for joining us and for doing your part to build an ecosystem of highly inclusive apps. Thank <laughs> you.